We are honored to uh, be joined once again by Dr. Benjamin Dworkin, director of the Rowan Institute for Public Policy and Citizenship. Good to see you, Ben. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks so much for having me. You got, hey, Ben, one of the things you and I talked about offline the other day was the importance of promoting um, public service in young people, having young people get into government, public, well, not just government, just public service. Question. With all the garbage going on, all the dysfunction going on, how hard is it to do that, to get young people to say, I want to be in public service because that looks like I can make a difference? It's not as tough as I think it used to be. And, and here's why. I think, you know, there was a certain point when I was growing up in the 80s that people just thought it was all corrupt and they just wanted to stay out of it. No one wanted to be involved. They just wanted to go and make money. Um, at a certain point, a little bit of a generation later, people said, well, I want to do something. Right. We, we, we began to see a, a new movement, a resurgence in youth activism, but it, but it wasn't through politics. And what we've seen in the last decade is a move where people who want to be active, who want to change the world, who believe in something and want to make a difference, understand that politics is an avenue for them to do it. Politics, government, issue advocacy. You know, it used to be the Think global, act local, right? Just work in right. your local soup kitchen, things like that. And now people understand whether they're inspired uh, by a member of Congress or somebody running for president, that through politics, through the system, you can actually make a difference. So we're seeing uh, an increase uh, in many ways in people who are participating. It's not as hard as it used to be. Granted, they're still, I'm still dealing with college students and it's always going to be tough any number of different things on their plate these days. But I, I think people understand that no matter what you do, politics will intrude on your life. And so you should know something about it. I'm curious about this, Ben. So, so many questions about the outcome of elections. If I, if I don't like the outcome of the election, obviously we saw what happened in 2020. We know what January 6th was and why it matters. To what degree do you believe there has been a, a significant diminishing of public confidence in the outcome of elections? I think it's been, it has been significant. Um, but this and what does that have to do with citizenship? Is there a connection between that and citizenship? Yes, of, of course there is. Look, the point about citizenship is that it can't be rented. You have to take ownership for what's going on. You know, my father used to tell me, you know, Ben, in the history of the world, no one ever washed a rented car. And the idea was, you know, you have to take ownership for your democracy. I think that is where citizens have a, an absolute role to play, even if these things you watch on TV seem distant uh, to us. The role that you know folks like we play here at Rowan University uh, and with RIPAC is really to try and uh, reduce that connection, to reduce the intimidation, the fear factor uh, uh, of getting involved. By the way, RIPAC is the acronym for the uh, Rowan Institute for Public Policy and Citizenship. Ben, let me try this. So uh, we were taping on the 21st of March. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, former President Trump, criminal issues, legal issues, let it play out. Politically, though, say the president runs again. Well, you say the former president runs again, the current president runs again. Investigations going on back and forth. Republicans in Congress can investigate uh, Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, every family member back and forth investigating each other. What does that do for our representative democracy when it's very difficult to separate the electoral process, the political process, from the prosecutorial criminal accusation. That's not even a category. I don't know what it is, but they're all meshed together in, in the world of social media. It, How's it that for a complicated it, question, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> Let me try and give you a straightforward answer. It makes it much tougher. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. But here's why I believe America comes through. You're going to tell because me there's a silver lining, Ben Dworkin, isn't you? Aren't you? There is. There is. I won't say it's a silver lining, but I think there's an opportunity to find that silver lining. And this is what I mean by that. These, this election you were hypothetically describing 
is for president. People run for president in a different way than they run for state legislature or for even governor or Congress. Running for president is a grander exercise. It's about a vision for the future, whether it's make America great again or bring stability or whatever theme, uh, um, hope and change, whatever theme comes uh, through morning in America. All of these things that we understand. By the way, Ben and, makes reference to the former president Reagan and former President Obama. But go ahead. I'm, and I'm sorry, sorry for for that's okay. Dating ben, myself, we're insiders. But, we're political junkies. Go ahead. <laughs> but the point the point is that running for president uh, is more of a visionary exercise. And so, even as the mudslinging goes back and forth, there is an element of where are we going as a country, um, and. The country may be divided, but we are arguing about where we want to go, this direction or that direction. I think that gives us hope because in the end, everybody gets a chance, in theory, to vote. I mean, what we had in 2020, more people voted for Donald Trump than any other candidate running for president in the and history of the Republic, except votes. for one, Joe Biden. <laughs> so that, you know, I think... That was a, a tremendous uh, uh, testimony to and a lot of young the people. Ben, of a lot of young people voted. A lot of young people voted. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, young people, young people voted in record numbers. We've seen that uh, again. Um, you know, as they, certain analysts uh, and folks do studies about uh, young person voting, we see a, a surge in it in 2022 as well. So. We will um, we'll see how things play out in 24. And we'll keep the conversation going with Dr. Ben Dworkin, director of the Rowan Institute for Public Policy and Citizenship. Uh, my good friend, Ben, thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Steve. I'm Steve Adubato. That's Dr. Dworkin. We'll see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting reimagined child care. Veolia. New Jersey Sharing Network, RWJ Barnabas Health, Let's Be Healthy Together, The Northward Center, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Operating Engineers, Local 825, Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, Choose New Jersey, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by R-O-I-N-J and by NJ.com. I am alive today thanks to my kidney donor. I am traveling and more active than ever before. I'm alive today thanks to my heart donor. I'm full of energy and back singing in my church choir. I'm alive today thanks to my lung donor. I'm breathing easy and I'm enjoying life's precious moments. There are about 4,000 people in New Jersey waiting for a life-saving transplant. Donation needs diversity. For more information or to become an organ and tissue donor, visit njsharingnetwork.org.